some pieces of dung quickly. I've got some elephant dung and I'll get some buffalo dung and some impala dung. We'll have a quick look at those. some entertainment in the background. Let me uh, see how this works. Put all on the edge here. That's sand, of course. Move the guys around so they tend to roll away. Hope you can hear me all right. I'm going to speak up a little bit. I'm a bit far away from that microphone, but. Um, Four kinds of dung, let me just get the rhino, rhino dung and turn it right in. All these animals, even though I've picked a little bit older dung, things that are normally sort of anything between 24 and 72 hours old, just it's easier to handle. But all the dung, the species that they represent or that they come from, would all have been here within the last 24 hours. These little guys, that's from a daker, we'll talk about it just now. They, uh, they come here especially at night time as you see often around the pan at Gauri Water Hole as well, at Gauri Pan there's a daker that's almost there all the time. So um, let's start from the smallest, since we already mentioned it, there's a daker. Very very fine dung, if you look at the texture of it, that's the hippo up to. Not really worried about it, just so you know, it's not that we're playing with danger or anything. He's, we know this guy well, he's going to stick in the water, he might snort now and again, if he gives us a yawn, um, Herman can give you a quick view. But if you look at this dung, look at the texture, literally the wind blowing it away there. It's very, very fine. How's that there? Can you get it right? Literally like a powder almost. You compare that to this texture of this for instance, we'll talk about this one just now. This is very, very fine. It literally is like a powder. It's because it's been chewed over and over. So first of all, it's from a ruminant, something that re-chews the food. Let me just turn that radio down more. Another channel. All right, so this is from a ruminant, something that chews the food again. In the case of a daker, they're very specific. The small bits they eat, nice, uh, tasty leaves and so on. Go up a little bit, just the next size along. So I touched those already. You can see this is a bit bigger now. Look at the size of that. That's from an impala. Again, they eat leaves and twigs and, and, uh, and grass, of course. They mix feeders. This thing's a little bit dry, so it's a bit hard. It's crushed. Again, you can see very, very powdery. As you can see, just even, I mean, you're not even seeing the finer bits because it's blowing away in the wind. Again, they're ruminants. They chew that cud and they re-chew the food and grind it down really fine. And what that basically allows them to do is it allows them to digest cellulose. Now we're not going to get into the details just now because part of the fun of discovering things like this is to not to get too complicated. But it allows them to, to digest the cellular structure, if you want, of the plant material so that per weight of food that they eat, they can get more nutritional benefit. This is also a ruminant, a much bigger one. And for those of you that have been to a cattle farm before might recognize this. It's a little bit covered in sand. But this is from a buffalo. Look into the texture there. You can still see it's quite wet. Look into it right in there. Actually smells quite nice. I'm not trying to be funny about that. It does smell like cattle. I, I love cattle. Grew up around cattle as a youngster. And you can smell exactly the same. Just cattle with a bit more attitude maybe. But again, very, very fine. Considering the bulk of the animal and that they bulk grazes, they eat all kinds of grass. They're not that specific. It's also because they ruminate. Now we go from that to up one size. Steenbuck is about this big. Weighs a few kilograms. Uh, impala, buffalo is about a ton. 1,000 kilograms. This is about a two-ton animal. This is from a rhino. I wonder if Josh and them, if they're in the control center, I'm sure they're enjoying this as well. They figured it all out earlier themselves. Look at the dung's texture. You can see it's mainly just grass. Not mainly, it is only grass. You might get some thicker pieces of grass, but that's still a grass blade. 
And then of course, we actually do this from further away. Yeah, so again, if you look at the texture of it, quite finely digested. Here's some fresher ones. Whole bunch of grass. Looks like compost from the garden. So, bulk grazers eat all kinds of grass. They've got a hindgut fermenting stomach, so they don't chew the food again. They've got to eat a lot more to get nutrition from it, but uh, it comes up much rougher. And then just before I start uh, boring you, this is from one of my favorite animals. This is from an elephant. A specific one from probably a youngish elephant, just judging by the size. And you can see elephants, they eat grass, but they also eat twigs and leaves. So you get these long, stringy bits of bark, and this is from a twig probably. These long, stringy bits of bark and grass and things in the, in the dung. There's another piece of stick. It's a much, much coarser and uh, rough food. Let's have one last look at the hippo. Alright, well, uh, something a bit different. Maybe tomorrow we'll look a bit at uh, a couple of plants or something like that. We'll see. And for the moment we can... Oh, look at that. Speaking of one of the smaller animals, the daker we spoke about, there you can see it just coming down for a drink. Let me look there, there's the daker coming down. And the dakers often will spend a large part of the evening around the vicinity of the water here. And the hippo in the foreground. Just before we go, a question from Stacy regarding hippos. And uh, basically, the way they spray their dung or spray mark. You might even see it sometimes in the water. He did it earlier when we stopped. And it's not so much a defensive mechanism as it is more a territorial display if you want obviously both from a visual point of view but also from a scent point of view and hippos use that dung that they spread out using the tail like a rudder or a whisk almost and they uh, spread that also when they move around at night when they're feeding again to leave scent marks around for other hippos what this hippo is doing when we come down to the water's edge he's being a little bit territorial he's saying hey this is my water give me some space and he's marking at the same time in terms of defenses uh, Stacey, probably those teeth you saw it yawning earlier big uh, teeth that are excellent for stabbing and they use that obviously for fighting amongst males for territorial dominance but it's also a very important defense mechanism you know you do get some lions that will take hippos down but they need to be lions with experience oh he's going to give us a bit of a display again let's see there you can see the teeth let's see if he opens his mouth all the way also have a look right into the back of the mouth if he opens it come on that's a very half-hearted effort. You can see the molars at the back of the mouth. Obviously, that's what they use to grind the grass down. Just out of interest, hippo dung looks very similar to, uh, to white rhino dung. Also, that same grassy texture. Well, I think I've spoken enough dung for the afternoon. Let's uh, continue on a little bit.